Ooh, look at the frost on this thing. That thing is, that is bougie. The fourth release in Angel's Envy Cellar Collection is here. The Cellar Collection, which started in 2019 with an Oloroso Sherry Finish Bourbon, followed by a 10-year Tawny Port Finish, then a Madeira Finish Bourbon. The newest release is the first rye in the collection, Finish in Iced Cider Casks. What is it? How does it taste? What is Iced Cider? Let's find out on the Mash and Drum. What's up, folks? I'm Jason Steve from The Mash and Drum. Welcome back. Angel's Envy, the Louisville-based distillery, has released its Angel's Envy rye whiskey finished in ice cider casks. This is the first rye in the cellar collection and features a 7-year-old 95% rye whiskey finish for 364 days in ice cider casks from Vermont-based Eden Specialty Ciders. Check out the bougie right now. The flavor profile of this whiskey is very unique. The spiciness of the rye is balanced by the fruity sweetness from the ice cider casks, and there's crispness that is really distinct. We've never seen a whiskey finish in ice cider cask before, so we're excited to introduce this finish as part of our cellar collection, said Kyle Henderson, Angels Envy's distillery production manager. All right, so oh, get a pour of this. All right, so what is ice cider? It's a dessert style cider that is produced primarily in the northern US and Canada. The French oak casks used to finish this Angel's End release were used by Eden Specialty Ciders to create an ice cider from tart, late season, northern spy apples that had been naturally cold concentrated in Vermont before partial fermentation and aging. So those cold apples just make the cider just that much more sweet and concentrated. You couple that with a French oak and then this 95.5 rye, you got something pretty unique sounding. So inspired by that unique ice cider production, Angel's Envy packaged this bottle in a frosted glass bottle and a commemorative gift box. It looks really cool. The packaging for this bottle, I would say, is a standout. I love the, uh, the frosted glass bottle. It's pretty cool looking. All right, guys, so the release consists of just 6,000 bottles. It's available for purchase at select retailers in New York, California, Florida, Tennessee, Illinois, Texas, and Kentucky, as well as the Angels Envy Downtown Louisville Distillery. A total of 500 bottles were reserved for the pre-sale lottery at the distillery. This is bottled at 107 proof and retails for 250 apples. Dollars. Sorry. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. All right, guys, so I have the Angels Envy... Uh, their standard finished rye, which is uh, finished in Caribbean rum cast. So we're definitely going to do a quick comparison once we go through the special release. All right, let's go to the nose on this one. So the first thing that jumped out of this class was how unappley it was. Apply? Is that a word? Apply. How, how unapple forward it was. Um, I got a lot of caramel and that 95.5 rye really comes through, I think, on the nose. You get a lot of caramel though, I'll say that. This thing opens up. This is the probably the second pour I've had, and the apple is really starting to come through a little bit more, like a candy apple. Apple and cinnamon, 
a lot of cinnamon. This is very, very cinnamon heavy, which I, I love cinnamon. I put cinnamon in my coffee all the time, actually. It doesn't matter what coffee it is. Just put a little, little dab of cinnamon, love it. I mean, it's literally like a fall candle in a glass. It's, it's very, um, again, when I first opened it, first taste I got of this, it, it, it was more rye forward. Man, a little bit of air goes a long way because now all the apple, the cinnamon, caramel, candy apple all coming through here. Even like an apple peel, you almost kind of get like that fresh smelling apple. All right, let's go for a try. Here we go. I love the spiciness of this. I did not expect this to have this much depth of spice character, especially coming off what I know about that Angel's Envy, uh, their regular rye. And you know, we'll get to that comparison in a bit. But this is just a lot of spice. The 95.5 rye really punches you, especially in the palate. The first sip, let's go to the next one. And now the sweetness comes in. Second sip, as you kind of get your bearings after all that rye spice, kind of just punches you right in the throat. <laughs> you get the apple, the caramel, the cinnamon, it's all there. It's like that outside of the candy apple. With the nuts, I feel like there's a little bit of a nuttiness here too. Sometimes you get those candy apples that are rolled in peanuts. I don't know if it's peanuts, I don't think it's, I don't think it's as, as raw tasting as a peanut, but there's a nutty characteristic going on here. A little bit of chocolate I get too, like a very faint hint of like milk chocolate. The finish on this thing for 107 proofer is pretty, pretty awesome. So this is where the experience starts tailing off a little bit. As your palate gets used to this, it just gets a little bit less interesting, I think, because now you're not so much surprised by the spiciness anymore and you're a little bit left with now what's happening on the palate what's happening on the finish. The finish is the is the one part that still sticks around, but the flavors up front, you're still getting the apple, the caramel, still, I mean, it's an absolute cinnamon bomb, maybe a little bit of a, like a cinnamon red hot too, especially on the uh, the back of the palate on this one. It's, it's way more balanced than I thought it would be. It still doesn't mean it's, you know, blowing me away, but it's pretty solid. Yeah, it continues to get more apple-y. <laughs> I don't know what the hell the word is. Yeah, it continues to get a little bit more apple forward as you sip it. The rye spice still sticks around. It's what happens in between that I kind of have a little bit of an issue with. I love the front of the palette, love the finish. The middle is, is lacking a little bit for me, but you know, all in all, pretty pretty solid rye whiskey, way better than I, than I anticipated, just coming off of what I know and I seem to like or dislike from Angel's Envy. But let's, uh, let's compare it to the rum cask finish. All right, so Angel's Envy, their finished rye, their standard finished rye here. Now this is finished in Caribbean rum casks. This is bottled at 100 proof, so just slightly underneath the, uh, the ice cider finish. And let's see what we get on the nose here. The Angel's Envy rum finish is so insanely sweet on the nose, especially coming off this. The ice cider finish actually comes off like a legit rye. This does not. This comes off like just pure liquid, candy, just absolute burnt marshmallow on this. I'm also getting like a burnt rye bread note, like you left it in the toaster a little bit too long, but man, is it sweet. Oh my gosh, and on the palate, it is just maple syrup, banana, burnt marshmallows. There's absolutely no presence of rye whiskey to me on this. There's no spice, there's nothing, it's just all sweet. Man, you really get like the molasses in there from the rum finish, the maple syrup. This is just so cloyingly sweet. It just like, to me, especially coming off of this. Uh, the Angel's Envy Rye, I've definitely given to people that are new to whiskey because this is a really nice, just ease into it because it's so sweet. Um, but to me, it's not my thing, especially for rye. For, for you for you out there that are fans of this Angel's Envy Rye Whiskey and you're thinking that this new seller collection is just going to be kind of a different version of this, that's not the case. This is way, way over the top sweet, whereas the new seller collection, uh, this ice cider version, is way more of a, of a rye whiskey to me. It's got sweet, it's got spice, it's got balance. Is it 
my flavor profile in particular, no. But I will say out of all the Angel's Envy products I've had, this is probably my favorite. But overall, I guess we're gonna have to go to the final breakdown of, to figure out my final thoughts. But before we do that, let's uh, make our second cocktail in this month's box with Shaker and Spoon. You guys have heard me talk about Shaker and Spoon before, a subscription service that teaches you how to make bar quality cocktails from recipes designed by award-winning mixologists. Shaker and Spoon builds these boxes around one singular spirit and tries to give you different styles of cocktail making. They give you recipe cards like this, how-to videos, everything you need to guide you through mixing and garnishing the cocktails step by step. Each box includes all the ingredients other than the alcohol for about 12 cocktails, four from each recipe, everything you need, syrups, bitters, garnishes, infusions. They give you specialty syrups that are all house made, all created in small batches in Red Hook, Brooklyn. So this month, uh, what I want to do is focus on one box and all three cocktails. Today I'm making the second cocktail from the Summer Scotch 2 box. These Scotch cocktails have some really cool ingredients and I wanted to explore how it could be used in a cocktail. For this one, I'm using a simple blended scotch that has a hint of peat in it, so I'm excited about that. I'm making the cocktail called Pretty Poppin'. <laughs> so for this cocktail, I need the supplied ingredients of grapefruit, elderflower, marmalade, that's right, agave, nectar, lavender bitters, and club soda. This sounds friggin' cool, let's make it. All right, so I already added my scotch. Next up is one ounce of grapefruit, elderflower, barmalade. One ounce of barmalade. Next is to add one teaspoon of agave nectar, which is right here. Ooh, that is syrupy. In you go. I gotta try this. Mmm. It's like a cross between honey and simple syrup. Lastly is four dashes of lavender bitters. One, two, three, four. All right, now it's time to shake it until some frost goes on the shaker. Cue the funky bartender slow-mo shaking music. Here we go. All right, we got it all, the frost is here. Let's pour it in the Collins glass. And then to top it off, two to three ounces of club soda. All right, let's give this one a try. Ooh, that's summer in a glass right there. It's floral, it's sweet, it's very bubbly. Man, you could drink, you could drink the hell out of this one. It's really good. I, I'm actually glad I used a little bit of the smoky scotch in this one to kind of offset the sweetness. But yeah, just using ingredients I would have never thought to use in a million years. Again, it's it's a reason why I like uh, Shaker and Spoon so much. All right, so let's recap. Shaker and Spoon is a monthly cocktail subscription box that will deliver these craft cocktails right to your door. Again, each box has three recipes created by world-class bartenders, as well as enough ingredients for 12 total cocktails, four from each recipe. The subscriptions start at 50 bucks a month, but click the link below in the description or use code MASH and DRUM at checkout for 20 bucks off your first box so you can check it out. Now go get some fun cocktails delivered to your door and share with some friends. And have some more of this. All right guys, so final breakdown time. Price for this one, $250 retail. Uh, you gotta factor the box and the frosted glass into this. I know you hate to think of that because you can't drink that part of it, but you gotta factor it into the price. Secondary value, I'm seeing these go as high as $450 to $500. And I think you're just paying more for the collectability in that aspect than for what's inside the bottle. Availability, limited. I know, 6,000 bottles available in New York, California, Florida, Tennessee, Illinois, Texas, and Kentucky, as well as the, uh, the Angels Envy Distillery from that lottery if you were lucky enough to get a bottle. So pretty limited run overall. Uh, value for this one. Value for this one for me was was tough because I think it's it's very you know dependent on your perspective. I think some folks will look at this bottle and because it's an ice cider finish, which is a pretty unique finish for a rye whiskey, you know that that obviously you know puts some more value into it because it is a unique finish. I mean that's what everyone's looking for is to do something unique, whether it be a finish, whether it be a blend, uh, whatever it may be. When it comes to this one, value for an ice cider finish, 107 proof, Angel's Envy, I'm gonna say it's a little bit below average. All right, most I pay for this one. In, in a perfect world, I wish this bottle was like maybe 150 bucks rather than 250. I mean, that's a lot to ask for what you're getting in the bottle. I mean, it's good, and like I said, it's probably the best Angel's Envy product I've had personally, but I don't think you know it's worth any cent more than the retail price of 250, but although I do wish it was a little cheaper. 
Is it a recommend? I can't say a full yes on this one. I'm gonna say if, if there's a chance you could try this before you buy it to do that instead, it's good. I, I do enjoy it and like I said, I'll keep saying it. it's probably the best Angel's Envy product I've had so far. I love the sweet, I love the spice, I love the balance of it. Is it like a super home run where you get all this viscosity and all that stuff? No, I think it's got a great front palette. I think it's got a great finish. Probably the finish is the best part of it. Mid palette's lacking a little bit for me. So for me, I, it, it's not that it's bad. I don't think it's really good. I would say try before you buy. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this video for the new Angels Envy Cellar Collection, the apple cider cask finish. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, hit that subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram, play on Twitter. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of the bottle. Does the finish make it worth to you? Is, it, is this a type of finish that's unique enough that you'd want to spend this type of money on it? Or do you not care? Um, or if you have tried this already, let me know down in the comments what you think of it, what your opinion is. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. Cheers. I'll see you next time right here on the Mash and Drum. Take care, everybody.